Hello guys, and welcome back to another Sonic Movie Theory. As I said in my last one, I've been wanting to talk about the Echidna Tribe and the role they may have in setting up a major plotline that could take shape in the sequel. First, I want to say that while not confirmed, I think there's an extremely high likelihood that Knuckles will appear in the sequel, because he's just far too popular of a character to hold off for the eventual third one. Now, I'm sure they're holding off Shadow for that. And I think there's enough room to introduce Knuckles and properly establish Tails in the same movie. But in Knuckles' case, the first movie may have already given us a lot of background information about him. For those passive moviegoers who don't know what an echidna is, but at least know of Knuckles, you were probably wondering, why were a bunch of Knuckleses in tribal clothing after Sonic and his power at the beginning of the movie? Well, as it turns out, these aren't just any ordinary echidnas. They weren't made up for the movie like Longclaw was. See, in the games, Knuckles is normally presented as the last of his kind. His species is nearly extinct, which could end up being true for real echidnas if we don't step up conservation efforts. But that's not to say there haven't been others besides him in this franchise. In the Archie comics, there's Shade, Julie Sue, and Enerjack, just to name a few. Believe me, there are a lot more. But there's one group canon to the games that's of interest to today's topic. Knuckles' namesake, the Knuckles clan, who first appeared in Sonic Adventure. Knuckles is a descendant of this culture and wears the two spikes on his gloves to honor them, hence their name and, by extension, Knuckles himself. Meaning that, contrary to popular belief, the spikes aren't biological, they're just part of the glove. It's a cultural thing to distinguish themselves. Anyway, two of the most notable members of the clan are the chief, Pachakamak, and his daughter, Tikal. By the way, since his name is never spoken aloud in the game, I know some people pronounce it as Pachakamak, but I prefer to say it with an inflection as they do in Peru, since he's actually named after an Inca village. While Tikal is named after one of the most well-known cities from the Maya culture, located in what is now Guatemala. See, proper inflections make a huge difference. The reason why these characters have such names is because Sonic Team, the division of Sega that works on Sonic games, traveled to Central and South America to get inspiration during the development of Sonic Adventure. Thus, why you can find a lot of landscapes and architecture similar to those at Machu Picchu and Chichen Itza in the level designs. I don't want to get too far off track, but I will be coming back to some of this cultural stuff later. Back to the movie, though. One major change about the Knuckles clan is that in the games, they exist 4,000 years prior to the events of Sonic Adventure, and we only see them in flashbacks and, in the case of Tikal, a spirit whereas the movie seems to be taking the approach that the clan exists concurrently with Sonic and the rest of the cast. So, unless something catastrophic happened to them in the 10 years Sonic has been on Earth in the first movie, plus the time between movies 1 and 2, Knuckles will probably not be the last of his kind in this continuity. Then again, as I'll talk about later, a catastrophe is not out of the question for them. Now, let's examine that opening scene a little closer. We can see that there are a few variations of Echidna Warriors, and some of them are copied to fill out the tribe. In fact, I counted 13 Echidnas running through the forest in this shot. I wasn't able to get movie clips for this video, but trust me, I rewatched this moment dozens of times, so I'm pretty confident that there are at least 13 Echidnas in this hunting party. But this Echidna right here, who we see in a few other shots, is unique. His mask and clothing are much more ornate, signifying him as the leader of the group. He's also the one who successfully shot down Longclaw with a bow and arrow. Does the shape of that mask look familiar? It kind of looks like the facial hair of another Echidna tribe chief we know. That's right, this is Pachakamak, and if that wasn't enough to convince you, we can also see these rectangular line markings on the mask that match up exactly with the markings painted on Pachakamak's forehead in the game. Now, this was already confirmed months ago by official Sonic artist and animator Tyson Hess, who we can thank for the Sonic redesign. But not a lot of people online seem to be discussing what Pachakamak's appearance in the movie means for the sequel. To understand that, we must once again turn to the source material. In Sonic Adventure, Pachakamak's mother, who we only hear about through Tikal's dialogue and a few NPCs, was the former leader of the Knuckles clan. She was very pacifistic, but when she passed away, Pachakamak took over and became a violent warlord. He also sought out the power of the Chaos Emeralds to make conquests and expand his empire. Seeking out power? Hmm, sound familiar? Well, we don't exactly know how Sonic's lightning abilities would be harnessed in the movie, but it would make sense that Pachakamak would at least want to try and obtain it if he has the same motivation as his video game counterpart. But then this raises the question, why would Pachakamak have this motivation? 
Is he just a one-dimensional villain character who wants power and glory just because? Well, let's look back to the game again. Father, please don't! To call that seven emeralds are essential to our survival. It is for the good of all our people. How can I make you understand? Attacking other countries, stealing and killing can't be the right path to peace. No one has the right to take their holy grounds. I beg you, Father! And this moment from the end of the game where he tries to steal the Chaos Emeralds from their shrine. We need those seven emeralds to give us total power. It's power for the people. And they are your people too, you know. We must get that emerald. So it seems as though he claims to have the survival and well-being of his people at heart. Undoubtedly what he's doing is wrong, but does his argument justify anything? To answer that, we need to look at this from the cultural and historical context. Remember when I said earlier that Tikal's name comes from the Maya culture? Well, other than Pachacamac's name, which as I said was derived from Inca origins, it seems as though the Knuckles clan is primarily based on the real-life Maya culture. You may have read about the Mayas as well as the Incas and Aztecs as far back as elementary school, which for me was just my teacher putting on the Emperor's new groove and calling it a day, but contrary to popular belief, the Maya were not one unified empire, and instead were separated into various city-states that would often war with each other. I think that the Knuckles clan is just one of these city-states in their world, and there could have been other groups of echidnas that Pachacamac wanted to defend against but the prospect of using the power of the Chaos Emeralds may have made him ambitious and want to escalate the conflict further, hence what Tikal said about attacking other countries, or in this case city-states, stealing and killing. Tikal also had a close relationship with her grandmother, and so became pacifistic herself, but couldn't successfully hold back her father from doing the awful things that he did. Not only did Tikal want to stop her father's warmongering, she was also concerned for the peaceful little creatures known as the Chow at the Emerald Shrine. The water god of destruction Chaos served as custodian of the Chow at the shrine, so when Pachacamac didn't listen to Tikal and tried to take the emeralds with great hostility, this happened. Yep, Pachacamac and those other guys were killed, for the horrendous delivery of that line. In all seriousness, Chaos used all seven emeralds to transform into perfect Chaos and killed them for bringing harm to the adorable Chow. To prevent Chaos's anger from destroying the world, Tikal sacrificed her own life to seal him in the Master Emerald for 4,000 years, until Dr. Robotnik broke the emerald to employ Chaos in leveling the world so that he could build Robotnik Land. This cautionary tale is why Tikal is one of my favorite female characters in the franchise, and it's a shame that she's such an obscure character today. But since Pachacamac exists in the movie universe, there's a good chance that Tikal does as well and could get the big screen treatment in the sequel. And if the filmmakers choose to give more focus on the Knuckles clan plot point set up by the first movie, it would be a good way to introduce Knuckles. Or vice versa. Now, all this doesn't necessarily mean that the sequel is going to be adapting the Sonic Adventure storyline, but it would be a good way to introduce the Chaos Emeralds, and maybe even Chaos himself. Chaos was a technological marvel in the Dreamcast system back when Sonic Adventure originally came out, but nowadays it's easier than ever to render a CGI water monster on the big screen, and he sure would make for some good action sequences. And perhaps taking advantage of the fact that the Knuckles clan exists at the same time as the present events of the movie universe, the sequel could end with a twist by having to call sacrifice herself to seal Chaos and the Master Emerald to resolve the movie's conflict, instead of it occurring 4,000 years ago. This is all assuming, like I was saying earlier, that they'd be able to juggle this plotline along with establishing tales and Robotnik's return from the Devonian. And if we do see Pachacamac again, I hope he looks more like he does in the video game. During the opening flashback, he looked to be in his prime, with a body shape that more closely resembled Knuckles. But with all the time that has passed, it's possible his physique may have changed. So maybe Robotnik won't be the only one fattening up before the sequel. We'll just have to wait and see. But anyway, feel free to let me know in the comments what you think. Does Tikal exist in the movie universe? Is Paramount adapting the Sonic Adventure storyline for the next movie? And why do you think the Knuckles clan is after Sonic's power? 
And if you want to help me spread the word about this theory, please consider sharing this video with other Sonic communities or anyone who you think would be interested. Don't forget that you're also welcome to leave a like and subscribe, and doing so will let me know if you want more videos like this. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed, have a nice day, and thank you for your time.